Hello guys, welcome back to the Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Civil Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the, the to why we use the rectangular beam but not circular beam. However, we also use circular beams but you may have seen very few cases in which we design the circular beam. Most, most of the multi-story buildings are the mega projects who involve the rectangular design beams while we don't uh, focus on the circular beam. There are some reasons and I will explain the two major reasons here in this video that why we choose uh, to design the rectangular beam for our, for our any project and why we don't the circular beam. So let's first explain the, the first reason that why we use the rectangular beam. As we know that the, you may have seen this formula from the bending that sigma by y is equal to the moment divided by i where sigma is the bending stress. Let's consider this is a simply supported beam. So when the load acts on this beam, so this beam is going to be deflected in this way and some bending will produce in this beam due to this load and due to this, this bending, bending stresses will be created in this beam. So we call sigma is the bend, bending stresses. So the bending stresses created in this beam represented by the sigma and it is known as the bending stresses. Now why? Why if uh, this is my beam and this is the cross section detail of this beam. So this is the neutral axis of this beam. So why can be defined as it is the distance from the neutral axis to our point of interest. So let's suppose this is our point of interest. So this distance from the neutral axis up to this point is known as the y. And y may be from the neutral axis up to the top of the beam. So we call it this the y. It depends on your point where you want to find the stresses. So let's suppose uh, from the neutral axis the distance is, my interest is this, so the distance from the neutral axis up to this point is known as the y, where m is the bending moment and i is the moment of inertia. So we can simplify this equation is like in this way, y I place the y here, this dividing by the i. So I just put the y here into this right hand side of the equation. So now the stress is equal to the m by i into y. Now, if I put my moment in y is constant, for example, for any beam, the uh, y point is my constant and bending moment is also constant for any beam. So what happens, the, uh, the stress, bending stress is in inverse relation with the moment of inertia. You can see here that it is in inverse relation with the moment of inertia. It means the higher the moment of inertia, it is higher, so your bending stress will be lower because it is in inverse relation. If my moment of inertia is lower, so my bending stress will be higher. So in case of the rectangular, if you have the rectangular beam and circular beam, both the beams have the same cross-sectional area. Both beams have same cross-sectional area. area. Both have the same area. So we found out that the rectangular beam has the more moment of inertia and the circular beam have not more inertia as compared to the rectangular beam while the rectangular beam has the more moment of inertia than the circular beam while having the same cross-sectional area so we prefer to use the rectangular beam because having more moment of inertia what happens more moment of inertia we will have the less bending stresses in our beam and we will require the less reinforcement to be used in the rectangular beam. So it will be our economical design to use the rectangular beam. That's the main reason that why we design the rectangular beam. Hope you guys understand the first reason that why we use the rectangular beam. Due to its high moment of inertia, due to its low bending stress creates in the beam. The second reason is that consider this is my beam. I place the beam on the site, let's, let's in, uh, the third floor or the second floor of my building. And I also pour the concrete in the slab and beam. So you can see this uh, T-shape of beam, or we can see the rectangular beam, right? This is a rectangular beam we design, and we pour the concrete. This is my slab of any inches. Let's suppose it's six inches, and this is my beam, the beam that you can see here. So in this case, you can see the form work for this beam will be easily provided from the ground, from the first floor, or from the inner floor to this beam and we can easily provide the form mark for this beam so that the concrete can be poured easily into this beam. And the rectangular form mark is easily available in 
every part of your country or any part of your world because the rectangular beam is simple uh, to design and very simple uh, to make its form work. Well, if you consider the circular beam here, in case of the circular beam, now when you pour the concrete, you have to make this circular form work for that. It may be like this one or maybe or any type, but you have to make the form work for the circular beam so that it can be, uh, it can provide the form work for the circular beam and when you pour the concrete the form work should not be disturbed and our beam should be well built in any multi-story building. So in case of the circular beam we have difficulty to place the uh, form work for the circular beam and it is not widely available uh, in any country. You might have seen that we use easily the form work for the rectangular beam because it is a simple a rectangle. It can be easily uh, hand out with this with these form marks with these probes but in case of the circular beam you have to design a special type of form mark which can support uh, which these the pipes can easily support this uh, form mark for the circular beam so this was the second reason that due to its difficulty of the form mark availability we don't uh, we don't go to the circular beam design but we design our beam is the rectangular beam hope you guys understand the difference uh, between the two why we use the rectangular beam and not the circular beams uh, in our designs. So this was our today lecture and don't forget to subscribe my channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching my video.